Hi guys, welcome to this video tutorial for Xtool P2. Today we will show you how to calibrate the laser path. This video has two parts. In the first part, we will show you how to determine if the level 1 laser path is deviated and how to calibrate it. In the second part, we will do the same thing for the level 2 laser path. You'll need these tools or alternatives to finish the job. The 2-in-1 screwdriver that comes with the machine. The L-shaped hex key that comes with the machine, 1.5mm. A hair dryer, masking tape, a computer with XCS installed. Okay, let's dive right in. After coming out from the laser tube, the laser is reflected three times and reaches the material surfaces. Disconnect the power supply of the machine. Use the hex head of the screwdriver to remove the five screws on the rear upper cover. Then open the lid to remove the six screws inside. Remove the rear upper cover. Note, make sure each laser reflector is installed correctly before calibration. If any reflectors are missing, misaligned, or installed incorrectly, the laser path test may not work. Plug in the power cord and power on the machine. Then connect with the XCS software. Proceed to the optical path setup interface in XCS. Control the laser module to move until it touches the front plate. Cover the hole at the back of the holder with masking tape. This hole allows the laser to pass through and reach the second level reflector. Press the tape to make the outline of the hole clear. Note, if the tape is too thin, apply two or three layers to avoid a serious burn hole on the tape. Put the lid down. Click Pulse. Open the lid to observe the burn mark on the tape. If the burn mark deviates within 4 mm from the center, no calibration is required for the level 1 laser path. Proceed to the test and calibration of the level 2 laser path. If the burn deviates 4 mm or more from the center, it's recommended to calibrate the level 1 laser path. If the laser did not burn a mark on the tape, it indicates a significant deviation in the path. Calibration of the level 1 laser path is required. Attention, do not process materials under this condition. Control the laser module back to the home position and exit the software. Disconnect the power supply of the machine and unplug the power cord. Pinch the fastening ring to remove the smoke exhaust pipe. Use the hex head to remove the six screws on the rear plate. Plug in the power cord and switch on the machine. Observe the test result on the tape. If there is no burn mark left on the tape, control the module to move a certain distance toward the rear plate. Put the lid down. Click pulse in the setup interface. Open the lid. Observe if there is a burn mark left on the tape this time. If not, control the module to keep moving forward and get it closer to the rear plate. Then repeat the previous steps until the laser burns a mark on the tape. If the burn is on tape but deviates from the center significantly, we need to adjust the screws to calibrate the level 1 laser path. Loosen the fixing screws on the sides. If the screws are fixed tight, heat them up with a hair dryer before screwing. Face toward the tape and observe the direction in which the burn mark deviates. Based on the illustration, Twist the screws on the first level reflector. This adjustment is meant to alter the reflector's angle, thereby guiding the laser path. Generally, an adjustment between 2 to 10 degrees is appropriate. Taking the test result as an example, the laser path deviates to the left. To adjust the laser path back to the right, we should turn the top right corner screw clockwise. After the adjustment, we need to test again to confirm if the laser path is in place. Remove the used masking tape. Apply the new masking tape. Put the lid down. Click pulse in the setup interface. Open the lid. 
Observe the position of the new burn mark relative to the hole center. If the deviation from the hole center is still greater than 4 mm, repeat the previous steps to adjust the screws until it is less than 4 mm. It should be noted that, when the gantry is closer to the first level reflector, the burn mark should be closer to the hole center. When the deviation is within 4 mm, control the gantry to move backward, making it closer to the front plate. Repeat the previous steps to test and adjust the laser path. If the deviation is within 4 mm when the laser module is pressed against the front plate, you have finished the level 1 laser path calibration. Tighten the fixing screws after the calibration. Control the laser module back to the home position and exit the software. Switch off P2 and unplug the power cord. Put the rear plate back. Use the hex head to install the six screws on the rear plate. Install the smoke exhaust pipe. Put the rear upper cover back. Install the five screws on the rear upper cover. Then open the lid to install the six screws inside. Plug in the power cord and power on the machine. Then connect with the XCS software. Control the laser module to move to the bottom right corner of the machine. Cover the hole at the left side of the laser module with masking tape. This hole allows the laser to pass through and reach the third level reflector. Press the tape firmly to outline the hole clearly. Note, if the tape is too thin, apply two or three layers to avoid a serious burn hole on the tape. Put the lid down. Click pulse. Open the lid to observe the burn mark on the tape. If the burn deviates within 3 mm from the hole center, you don't need calibration. If the burn is 3 mm or more away from the hole center, it's required to calibrate the level 2 laser path. If the laser did not burn a mark on the tape, it means the path deviated badly. Attention, do not process materials under this condition. First, we need to confirm the deviation of the burn mark in the laser path test. If the laser did not burn a mark on the masking tape, control the module to move slightly to the left. Then put the lid down. Click pulse in the setup. Open the lid. Check for the burn mark on the tape. If there is still no burn mark, repeat the previous steps. Get the module closer to the second level reflector and conduct tests until one appears. Then we will need to adjust the screws on the second level reflector to calibrate the laser path. Taking the test result as an example. Remove the plate on the left. Loosen the fixing screws on the sides. If the screws are fixed tight, heat them up with a hair dryer before screwing. Face toward the tape and observe the direction in which the burn mark deviates. Based on the illustration, Twist the screws on the second level reflector. This adjustment is meant to alter the reflector's angle, thereby guiding the laser path. Generally, an adjustment between 2 to 10 degrees is appropriate. Based on the test result, we should twist the upper and lower right screws clockwise. After the adjustment, we need to test again to confirm if the laser path is in place. Remove the used masking tape. Apply the new masking tape. Put the lid down. Click pulse. Open the lid. Observe the position of the new burn mark relative to the hole center. If the burn mark deviates over 3 mm from the center, repeat the previous steps. Adjust the screws and conduct tests until the deviation is less than 3 mm. When the deviation is less than 3 mm, control the laser module to move to the bottom right corner. Repeat the previous steps to test and calibrate the laser path. When the deviation is within 3 mm, you finish the calibration of the level 2 laser path. Tighten the fixing screws after the calibration. Control the laser module back to the home position and exit the software. Put the plate back. Now it's done. You've finished the calibration of the laser path. We hope this video is helpful. 
feel free to contact the X Tool support team if you have any questions.